of all, I would like to start by saying thank you because it is good to be here with you in Newton Arts tonight and to be able to tell you about what the Lord has done for me and in my life. And to start with, I would like to read you a couple of verses from first, Second Timothy, <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 3. And I'm going to read you from verse 14 to verse 15. God's word says in 2 Timothy 3 verse 14, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Every time I read those verses, and particularly that phrase, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, I give thanks to God for the privilege of being born into a Christian home and into a Christian community because from my earliest days, I was surrounded by people who showed me that they believed in the reality of God, who prayed to God and expected to have their prayers answered who showed me that their Christianity made a difference to the decisions that they made in their lives, and who made it their priority to teach me the scriptures. And that meant that I grew up at home and in the church in Lisbon. I grew up knowing God's word, which, as Paul says, is able to make us wise unto salvation. Now, of course, as you all know, it didn't matter who my parents were. It didn't matter what family I was born in or what church I attended. It didn't matter what I knew factually or how much scripture I had memorized unless I came to know God for myself and to have my sin forgiven. And one day as a little girl, I did come to that realization, not just that all have sinned, but that I was a sinner. That sin wasn't just something that displeased mum or angered dad. It was something that displeased God. And I can remember coming to that realization that God in heaven who made me was angry at me for my sin. And it terrified me because I knew the scripture and I knew that the punishment for sin was hell. But as I said, I knew the scripture. I knew that the wages of sin was death, but I had also learned that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I had learned that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And I knew that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so that is what I did. I prayed to God. I confessed my sin, I asked him to forgive me, and he did. Now, the next day I told mum, and to be honest, I think she was more confused than anything else, because I hadn't gone to anybody and asked them for help. I hadn't spoken to anybody about what was going on in my mind. And you know what it's like when a very young child comes to you and says something, and you don't know how much to believe them, how much they're just repeating what they've heard from other people around them in the knowledge that it will make their parents happy. But mum knew wisely that if I was saved, she didn't need to trust in my words because she would know soon enough from my life whether anything had really happened or not. And so I can't tell you today the date when I was saved because I have no record of it. I can't even tell you what age I was. I was very young, maybe three or four. But as somebody said to me once, you don't need a birth certificate to know that you're alive. And what I can tell you tonight is that God did save me, that he forgave my sins, that I can pray to him for myself and he hears me. 
I can tell you that he loves me and cares for me and guides me in my life. And I can tell you that he's changed my heart so that I want to obey him and glorify him. And that is something that I would never have wanted to do of myself. And I'm not afraid of God's wrath any longer. I'm not afraid of the punishment for sin because I know that Jesus Christ took my punishment when he died on the cross and that my sins are forgiven. And I'm so grateful to him for what he has done. Now, I have another verse I want to read you and it's in 1 Chronicles chapter 29. When I was in my early teens in Lisburn Sunday School, we were studying the life of David. And at the end of the year, we came to the part where, as you will know, David wanted to build a temple for the Lord in Jerusalem. But the Lord told him that he couldn't because he was a man of war and of battle. He had to leave the job for somebody else. And so David made preparation he saved up the silver and the gold and the resources. He bought the land. He drew up the plans for the building so that Solomon, his son, would be able to build the temple. And one day in Sunday school, we came to read 1 Chronicles 29, to read a prayer that David offered on the day when he handed over to Solomon everything that he had collected and told him about the job that was waiting for him. And for me that morning, it was verse 14 that stood out. Because 1 Chronicles 29 verse 14 says, But who am I? And what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. It wasn't what you would call my missionary call, because I wasn't thinking of mission work at the time. If you tried to tell me that Sunday morning or the Sunday after that, that I would be standing here in Newton Arts tonight in the pulpit, I don't think I would have believed you. Neither was it something that I didn't already know logically and factually. But sometimes for me, it helps to have things laid out very simply. And that is exactly what this verse does. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. Because when we talk about giving God anything, our time, or our effort, or our energy, or our money, or our life, or our love, we aren't giving him anything that he doesn't already have a perfect right to. We aren't giving him anything that he doesn't already own because he's the one who created us. He's the one who saved us. He's the one who has made us the people who we are today and who has given us everything we have. And he's the reason that we have it, to give it back to him. And so I say that verse is not my missionary call. It isn't. But it's been in my mind ever since. And that's why when you get my prayer card tonight, you'll see that's the verse that I chose to put on it. It's been there in the back of my mind in all the decisions that I've made that have brought me to stand here in Newton Arts tonight. I was thinking of that verse when I applied for teacher training in Newton Abbey Independent Christian School. I was thinking of that verse when I first went to approach the mission board and when I applied to the Whitfield College of the Bible. And I thought about it a lot last summer when I was coming out of the college and didn't have a clue where I was going next or what I was doing. It's been there in the decisions that have brought me here tonight. But to me, it isn't a verse about big decisions. It's a verse about today and tomorrow and all the days that come after that. It's a verse that says, all things come of thee. 
because as Christians, I know that you will understand what I say tonight when I say that is our today and our tomorrow and all the days that come after that. That's why we're alive. That's why we're here, to give back to God what he has given us. And so after this meeting, when you hear me talk about the work to which God has called me in Kenya, and when you look at the video, please remember that I am not going to be doing anything different when I go to Kenya in the will of the Lord than what you are doing here as Christians every day in Newton Arts, than what we all do as Christians. We go to the place where God puts us and we give him the life that he made for us because it is already his and because we're so grateful to be able to give it to him. Thank you.